Hi there, Chief Midwife Jane for Red Nose, and today I'm delighted to be able to share with you a few little tips on how to create a really safe nursery, a really safe environment for your baby. It can be really hard to know what to do out there. There's so many conflicting um, sources of advice. There's lots and lots of products available to help you on your parenting journey, but it can be really hard to navigate that space. And so that's why at Red Nose, we are still recognised as the National Authority for Safe Sleep. And the information that we do provide to parents and healthcare professionals does come with a really strong evidence base, which underpins everything that we do. And so I'm really, really delighted to be able to share our information here with all of you today. So the first thing to think about when you're building the nursery and you're building the safe sleep environment for your baby is that we really do need to keep it very, very simple. Our babies are very simple little creatures and they don't need very much. So the first thing we need to do is find the, the right sleep space for our baby. And we know that the safest place to sleep our babies is a cot or a porta cot because cots and porta cots sold in this country must meet Australian standards for safety. They're Australian and New Zealand safety standards. And we know that those standards cover, most importantly, unsupervised long-term sleep. So that's the sleep that's happening, especially at night time when everyone's gone to bed and the house is quiet. Fingers crossed. So that's that's the ideal sleep space for your baby. Now, the choice of mattress is really, really important too. We need our babies to be lying down flat on their backs, but on a flat, firm surface. This, this is the safest surface to keep a baby in, to keep their airways nice and open and protected. So we need to make sure that the mattress is firm and flat, that it's really well fitted to the cot when it's centered into the cot, no more than, um, the diameter of two fingers um, between the mattress and the cot side. That's a little check that you can do to make sure that it fits there nicely um, and that it's nice and flat. Now, that is the safest setup that you can have for your baby. You'd probably consider put, putting a thin mattress protector on there, some nice uh, lightweight bedding for your baby, and that's it. So, it can be tempting to purchase other things to um, introduce into the sleep environment, such as lamb's wools or bumpers, um, dunas or um, nests, cocoons, uh, positioners, things to sort of nestle baby into and then put into the cot space. But when we do that, we're introducing significant risk to that baby, not only to their airway, but to their temperature control. And we need to make sure that our babies can um, modulate their temperatures in a really healthy way, but also continue to be able to ventilate in a really healthy way. So it's important that we don't add anything into the sleep space at all, because everything that we add to that sleep space is a risk. Now, don't despair if you've been gifted some beautiful um, baby nests or some beautiful positioners or some um, spaces that you can, you know, re rest your baby in. That's OK, but we need to use them in a really safe way. And the, the safest way to use those items would be when you're actively supervising your baby. Perhaps you're all together in the family room and you're, um, you know, spending time together and you need a, a place to to put your baby, absolutely fine. But those items don't have a place in the sleep environment and, and shouldn't ever be used for sleeping, particularly for unsupervised rests. Now, if you're um, using sleep environments that are pre-loved, so you've been, um, perhaps you've chosen to purchase a secondhand cot or a port -a cot or you've been given one to use, perfectly fine as well. Just make sure that obviously it's in good working condition. It um, doesn't have any protrusions, no rips or tears if it's a porta cot but also make sure that um, it's within, you know, a 10 year age range. And that's because Australian standards for safety are reviewed um, and or revised or retired every 10 years. And you want to make sure that the space that you have for your baby is the safest it possibly can be. So just, um, just to keep that in mind as well. Now, the research tells us, it's loud and clear, that you have your beautiful safe sleep space. The safest place to put that 
is in the parent or caregiver's room um, for the first six to 12 months of life because um, it's been shown to be protective against sudden unexplained infant death by as much as 50%. And that's for a whole bunch of reasons. Now, we understand that that's not particularly practical for many families. It might not be achievable for a myriad of, of reasons. And so then, you know, if you're thinking about uh, the room that you're putting your baby in, have a look up, have a look down, have a look all around for whatever potential hazard might exist that a little inquisitive baby that as as um, it grows and develops could um, have access to. So things like, are there any hanging cords that, that um, need to be securely fastened, you know, curtain cords, those sorts of things. Um, are there any um, electrical devices in the room? Are there any cords that need to be safely stored away? Um, plugs need to be covered. You know, all of those sorts of things, you know, uh, is there a canopy in the room that needs to be taken down? We need to make sure that the sleep space, remember, is fully uncovered and clear. We don't want to be adding any unnecessary risks to our babies. Are there wall hangings that need to be fixed firmly to the wall or better still taken off and replaced with our wall decals? So stickers are a really great thing to do in your nursery as well. Um, when you're thinking about your nursery furniture, chests of drawers, um, bookshelves, you know, those sorts of things can be really problematic and dangerous, particularly if um, You've got an older baby that's, you know, looking to climb up in the cot and pull things onto themselves. So really having a look at where you've positioned the cot, but also is there an opportunity for you to fix those pieces of furniture to a wall or a floor? Um, and certainly with drawers, there's lots of fantastic products that you can buy that can secure doors uh, closed as well so little fingers can't get caught um, and they can't use those to pull um, furniture onto themselves and, and really, really hurt themselves significantly. Um, certainly as well, the third most important thing to think about when you're setting up a safe nursery um, or a safe space for your baby is to always, always make sure that babies remain smoke free. And that's before birth and after birth. There's huge research um, out there that you know very 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 strongly recommends that babies do remain smoke free before birth and after because of the significant increase um, that exposure to um, tobacco smoke um, has on babies with regard to their SIDS risk and their sudden unexplained infant death risk. So really important that we make sure that we keep smoke well away from our babies. You know, you might consider um, um, having a fan, an oscillating fan in the room to make sure that we've got good ventilation as well, particularly in the summer months, that can be quite helpful. Um, but certainly making sure that we have our safe sleep environment, which is a cot or a porta cot don't have to spend much money. You can um, just make sure you find one that definitely, definitely has those safety standards loud and clear on there, whether it's on a sticker or a, or a swing tag or whether the supplier has been able to give that to you. We've got a safe mattress on the bed that's firm and flat and well fitted and not tilted with some safe bedding on there and nothing else in the cot. So no bumpers, uh, no extra pillows, no lamb's walls, nests, um, positioners, cocoons, anything like that, that could pose a risk to your baby. Okay. We want to keep these sleep environments nice and open. When you're in your nursery room, if that's where your baby is, have a little look around, make sure that there aren't any cords that haven't been um, safely secured away. Make sure that we don't have furniture that can easily be pulled on top of us um, and, and topple onto us. You know, make sure that electric cords are packed right away. Um, trips and falls and all of those things can happen in, in the nursery environment as well. And making sure that our babies, of course, are smoke free before birth and after. So thank you everyone for taking the time to have a, a listen to us. If you'd like more information with regards to how to set up a safe nursery or, or, or how to safely sleep your baby, make sure you head on to the Red Nose website, www.rednose.org.au or give our safe sleep phone line a call on 1300 998 698 and we'll see you soon. Bye.